Welcome back! In this video we're going to make this really cool hot air balloon picture. We just got done watching the Albuquerque Hot Air Balloon Festival and talking about hot air balloons and looking at some pictures. In those pictures we talked about a few art words and a few concepts. Number one, we noticed a lot of patterns. We noticed patterns in the balloons from top to bottom of the balloon and from side to side sometimes. Patterns are whenever something is repeated, like here we have A, B, A, B, A, B, and there's a certain piece, the A and the B, that's repeated over and over, and that makes a pattern. You could have a pattern with shapes, you could have a pattern with colors, you could have patterns of colors and shapes, um, and patterns really are endless all over, by, made by humans and in nature. So pattern is a really strong element of this picture that we're going to put in. Okay, Size was something else we noticed. We noticed that there are big shapes of things, medium and small shapes and sizes of things. We also learned that things in a picture when they're nearer towards you are bigger and when things are smaller they are farther away. So we have the two different um, ideas going of size and how far away something is. So in this picture the example would be a big balloon in the front and a little teensy weensy balloon in the background and we know it's really far away because of how small it is. Okay. The last thing we looked at and this is just a review, overlapping. We've talked about overlapping many, many times. And in this picture, we're going to overlap clouds behind our balloons, so there's some interest in overlapping. And if you want to, for some of your artistic choice, you can overlap two balloons, one on top of the other, and that will give you a more interesting picture as well. Our last thing we're going to introduce to you today is oil pastels. Now I've talked about oil pastels quite a few times, um, but I've never really formally introduced them. So here's our formal introduction. They are kind of like a cross between crayons and a cross between um, chalk. Chalk and crayons, um, they're kind of, they kind of feel different. They're a little oily um, and they're actually made with oil. The pigment, the colors are bound together into the stick of oil pastel using oil. Um, one nice thing is they give really bright, rich, vibrant colors. Another thing is you can overlap them on top of each other much better than you can with say crayons. Okay, if you push down you can get you know, color almost right over the top and like, create a completely different color. Another great thing about them is you can do a lot of blending with them. Okay, and if I just kind of clean this off um, and I make a big area of yellow and I take a little bit of blue and kind of graze right over there and then I can take it with my finger and smear it together and create a whole new blended color. So that's one technique as well. Also you can draw with the point or the flat edge. So if I draw with the point I can make a nice thin line. If I draw with the flat edge I can make a thick wide line. And the last technique that I'm going to show you is if you color in an area and you press really thick so you can't see any white paper, you can then use your fingernail or another kind of tool and you can actually scratch through the surface of your oil pastel and create different textures, lines, or shapes. So those are some of the skills we're going to be working today or on today with our oil pastels. One last thing with oil pastels is because they're in the box together like this, sometimes if they don't have the paper on them, they get kind of dirty. So what you can do is we'll have a paper towel sitting next to us and you can kind of color a little bit on the paper towel and you'll see how that cleans up that edge, whereas this side is dirty that side is clean and now I'll get a nice clean piece of green rather than if I use the dirty side I get I kind of start with a dirty schmear and then it gets cleaner after it's wiped off so you want to make sure your oil pastels are nice and clean before you start working with them so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our normal 60 pound piece of paper and our oil pastels those are the basic supplies you're gonna need on the back, you can take an oil pastel and write your name. My name's Mr. Lundgren, so that's what I'm going to put down. Mr. Lundgren, please write your name nicely and neatly so that I can read it. Once you have your name, give me a thumbs up. 
Good. Now we're going to flip our paper over and start our first hot air balloon. I'm going to kind of mimic or copy this version just, you know, so you, you can follow along and know what we're doing. And here's kind of what we'll look like before we start the sky. We're going to have one big hot air balloon, one medium sized, one that's kind of flying off the side of the paper and maybe two small ones or another medium one, but we want one to be really small and far away. So I'm going to start with my oil pastel and I'm going to outline my first big one. I'm going to do an upside down U shape like that. Then I'm going to do a flat line at the bottom. Okay, so there's my balloon. Then I'm going to do three spaces, so I need to have two lines. You can use any kind of line you want. I'm going to do a zigzag line and I'm going to do another zigzag line. Now you could use curved lines, you could use straight lines, you could use wavy lines, I don't care what kind of lines you use as long as there's two of them so you have three spaces. When you're done with that give me a thumbs up. Good, now we're going to choose a different color and you're going to make some shapes on the inside. So I'm going to make a diamond shape here. You can use your artistic choice to do any kind of shape you want. Square, circle, diamond, triangle, whatever. Amorphous. And then I'm going to make another one. I'm going to pretend that that's a diamond because it's kind of going around the edge. I'm going to pretend that this is a diamond and that one's going around the edge. And then I'm going to color those shapes in. When you're done coloring those shapes in, give me a thumbs up and make sure that you color them in really nicely, just like that, so there's no white paper behind it. Good, now we're going to color in three different colors. Okay, you're going to color one color on the top, middle color, bottom color, kind of like my example. You don't have to choose the same colors, you can choose whatever you want. I'm going to color those in. While you're coloring, you can pick whatever color you want, start coloring with me, but make sure that you do a nice, neat job of coloring, please. Okay, we want these to look nice. We want the colors to be bright and vibrant. We want you to press down and fill in the shapes fully. No scribbling, no messiness. Remember the first thing people see about artwork is whether it's neat or not. If your artwork is messy, it doesn't matter what kind of cool shapes you've used, what beautiful colors you have. If it's messy, that is the first thing people see. Oh, look at that messy artwork. They want to see nice, clean, neat artwork. And then they'll say, wow, look at that beautiful balloon and look at those colors the artists use. He or she must have done a really great job learning how to color. So you really want to make sure you do a nice, neat job. I'm going to use my last color, kind of a reddish orange here, and finish coloring my balloon in. When you get your balloon finished, give me a nice thumbs up so I know when I should move on and I want to make sure I don't leave anyone behind but I don't want to wait all day for people to finish either so try to do the best you can to keep up now that you're done you're gonna do a couple things you're gonna use your fingernail to scrape through one of your um, areas to make another pattern so here we go, I'm scraping through one area there to make another pattern. And then you're going to choose a second color. I'm going to use red here. And I'm going to trace right over my other color. Now, you might have to make different color choices than me. You might have to change it up a little bit depending on what you've got for colors or where you do your lines. But here I've used the scratching through technique and I've used overlapping two pastels technique. And then here I just did basic drawing to make your pattern. Okay, when you've used those skills, give me a thumbs up. Good, now that you're done, we're going to show you how to make the basket on the bottom of your hot air balloon. Okay, basically take any color, I don't really mind what color you use, and make a rectangle about two to one finger below your balloon. And try to make your little rectangle on the trapezoid side these two sides being diagonals rather than straight up and down. If you make it a trapezoid it looks more like a balloon because usually you see the balloons from the bottom. Okay, Then take a little line from here to here 
a little line from here to here, and then two more lines kind of evenly spaced at the back here and here to kind of attach the back of the basket of the balloon to the balloon. Okay. Now that you've finished your first balloon, you're going to make at least four more balloons. How many more? Good. And one of your balloons is going to be flying off the page, whether it's on the top, whether it's on the bottom, the side, the back, whatever. It's going off the page somehow. Another medium-sized balloon. Here's my medium-sized one there, my medium-sized one there. And then here I have a little teensy one and a kind of smaller medium-sized one. So I've got five all together. And you see how this picture I chose a different arrangement. You use your own artistic judgment and your own um, creativity to make your balloons however you want. At this point I'm going to fast forward so you can see me make them but we don't have to waste time listening to anything because we've listened to all that we need to listen to now. I want you to reuse some of these techniques, the scratching through, the drawing over the top of, and blending together some of your other pieces. Okay.
And there you go. That's how you make the balloons for our hot air balloon picture. Remember, I've taken some scratching technique here, overlapping here, blending right there, made the baskets on each one, and I have a big one, medium-sized ones, one going off the page, and one pretty darn small one. And in the next video, we'll show you how to make the background sky for the picture.